Welcome back to my channel. My name's Gareth James, and today we're going to be taking a look at bluff catching the river. So generally speaking, when you land on the river, a good bluff catcher is going to be one where you block a lot of your opponent's value hands and you unblock a lot of their bluffs. And then a bad bluff catcher is going to be where you block a lot of their bluffs and you unblock their value hands. If that's still a little bit confusing, let's jump straight into the two examples and things will become a lot clearer. Okay, so in this first example then, folds around to the hijack, he opens, we defend ace two off in the big blind, flop comes ace jack five with two hearts, one spade, uh, we do have a spade which is going to be important in this hand, we check, they bet third pot, we call, turn is the ten of spades, we check, they bet again uh, for a big sizing uh, around geometric here, and we call, and the river is the six of spades, we check once again, and they put us all in. At this stage, it's really important to, to make sure you know what a bluff catcher is. There are gonna be some situations where your opponent is gonna be value betting worse, but in this example, there's, there's no way that our opponent value bets worse. So therefore, this is a bluff catcher. Our opponent isn't gonna find uh, a value bet here with kings or queens or a jack. So we have a bluff catcher. Now having the ace of spades is a really, really nice hand because we block a lot of our opponent's really strong hands. We also block a lot of their uh, ace x hands, uh, two pair hands, stuff like that, that can go for uh, three bets in, in this situation. Let's take a look in Pio and see if we can find out a little bit more. All right, so our opponent is supposed to bet very, very frequently, a mix of sizes here. Uh, he did go for the third pot and we're gonna call with ace deuce off. You can see that in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, the turn is the ten of spades, uh, we don't have any leads here, as you would expect, and then our opponent is uh, generally going to be going for a big bet or a check, there is some small betting, but yeah, generally going for the big bet, and once again, we're going to call with, with our ace deuce off, uh, we actually call with all of our ace x hands in, in this situation, of course, uh, and then on the river, our opponent bets, and we have to call. So you can see here, if we hover over ace deuce off, that in fact, all ace deuce off are going for a call in uh, in this situation. So you might have thought, okay, yeah, I can call with the ace of spades, but I think all the other ace deuce offs maybe don't have the right characteristics for uh, a good bluff catcher in this spot. But let me explain a little bit more about what's going on here. So let's first start off with our opponent's betting range here. Now, if we bring up Range Explorer, uh, then what we can do, if we click Strat, and then just click on this pink blob here, you can see how the, the solver is splitting its range. On the river, it's a very polarizing bet. You can see that it bets top pair plus for value, and then it has low pairs, king highs, and nothings as a bluff. This is a really nice way to visualize what uh, the what your opponent's range is supposed to look like on the river. So you can see that the hands in the middle, under pairs, second pairs, third pairs, any of those that he lands here on the river after betting flop and betting turn, then he is just gonna check those back. He's not going to, uh, not going to bet those. So in terms of flushes, obviously we block all of the ASEX of, of spade hands, so that means that our hand is a pretty good bluff catcher. Um, we don't block any straights, we don't block any sets. We do block a lot of the two pair hands that he's gonna go for a uh, bet here with, which is great. And then we do block a lot of the single pair, single ASEX hands as well. As I said, under pairs, second pairs, third pairs, not in the betting range. Uh, and then when it comes to low pairs, uh, we, yeah, okay, we, we block a little bit of, uh, of the pocket twos, in this situation, so maybe you know that's one mark for the you know bad bluff catcher camp, but uh, yeah, generally we're not really blocking too many of these bluffs. Uh, the uh, king highs, we're not blocking any of these, and then we don't block any of these uh, nothing type hands either. So I mentioned there about blocking pocket twos. He doesn't have too many twos uh, or pocket twos in this situation, which is why we get to call ace deuce. But it's also why we don't get to call ace three, ace four. Uh, and ace, ace seven, uh, we want to have, you can see that ace seven calls when it has a spade, but it folds without. Ace four off, you know, mainly preferring to call when it has the ace of spades and exactly the same thing going on with ace three off. So if we go back to his jamming range, you can see that threes and fours goes for the bluff in this, uh, in this spot. And then there's some seven X hands as well. So this is why we don't want to have a hand with a seven in or a four or a three. So anytime you see the solution like this, where only parts of the range calls or parts of these individual hands call. It's worth going back in action to see what the uh, what the bluffing range looks like. And generally, yeah, as I said, uh, you don't wanna be blocking bluffs and you want to be blocking values. So not too much do sex in our opponent's range, but a lot more, um, you know, pocket threes, uh, pocket fours, uh, a lot of seven X that we're going for the bluff in, in this spot. 
So this is a good example of a good bluff catcher. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for us this time. We busted this tournament, but I'm pretty happy with my play here. Let's take a look at hand number two. Before we get into hand number two, actually, if you're enjoying this content and you want more daily content, then definitely check out my Instagram account. It's instagram.com forward slash MTT Poker School. I'll pop a link in the description down below. All right, here's hand number two then. We see a raise and we're going to flat ace queen off in the big blind. Flop comes king 10 6 with two clubs. We do not have a club. We do have one spade though. We check and they go for a 40% pot bet. We call. The turn is the ace of clubs. We're going to check. They go for a bet and we're going to call. And then the river is the seven of diamonds. We check and they put us all in once again. So in this situation, I would much prefer to have a club in my hand. Obviously we can't have the ace of clubs because the ace of clubs is out there. So we're looking for the queen of clubs in this spot. So let's take a look again in Pio to see what the value range looks like and see whether or not this is a good bluff catcher or a bad bluff catcher. Okay, so on the flop then, I just gave one bet size. I don't think this is the bet size that should be chosen here. I think he wants to either have a small bet like quarter pot or a, or a bigger bet, uh, but he did go for, the, uh, for this bet here and we are gonna call with ace queen off. The ace of clubs then on the turn and he is gonna go for a bet once again. And interestingly, he should be using the smaller size. So the turn changes quite a lot here. Let me just uh, pull up this EV comparison to show you. So generally speaking, on a, on a decent number of club turns, we're gonna see a lot more of the, the small bet. Uh, I was actually expecting to see a little bit a little bit more small betting than, uh, than this. But yeah, very interesting to see on the ace of clubs though, it is just uh, small bet and check with a, with a bit of big betting. So Villain does go for the big bet in this spot. It's about 60% pot. We just have a very easy call with Ace Queen. And the turn is the seven of diamonds. We have some leads, but really I think we just play pure check. And then our opponent is gonna go for uh, the jam. So let's take a look again at our opponent's jamming range. So let's click Strat. And then if we click this button here, you're gonna see the bits in the middle drop out. And so we've got two pair plus for value. And then these are the bluffs down here. So. Here are the flushes and we don't block any flushes. So we would quite like to have the queen of clubs in this uh, in this spot. We do block some uh, some straights, which is good. And sets, uh, we're gonna block aces, but I don't think it's gonna use a big size on the turn. Uh, two pair, we block. We do block ace king, and we do block ace 10, uh, which, is, uh, which is good. And then you can see top pair, second pair, they're just going for a, uh, a check. Um, but then we get to, to third pair. And all of a sudden you can see, okay, well, hang on a minute. Queens is actually going for a bluff here um, because it can get some ace hands to fold. Spoiler alert. Um, but you can see, yeah, you can see that Queens and Jacks go for a, a bet here. So we don't want to be blocking this bluff. Now, importantly, we have the Queen of Spades here and that doesn't seem to be bluffing that often. You can see bottom left-hand corner of the, of the grid. Uh, queen of Spades, Queen of Clubs does jam a little bit of the time, but is mainly going for the check. And the other combos, Queen of uh, Queen of Spades, Queen of Hearts, and Queen of Spades, Queen of Diamonds, you can see they're not in the range. They wouldn't have bet the turn for that big sizing. All right, and then low pairs, we you know we completely unblock these hands, which is which is really really good. And then we get to nothing, and we do block some of these hands. You can see Queen Nine of Spades does jam more than half the time. Queen Eight of Spades jams about forty three percent of the time. So you can start to see that we don't block a flush. Okay, we do block a straight. We block a uh, set, but I don't think a uh, top set's gonna play like this. We do block some two pair, which is good, um, but then top pair is not going to value bet. Um, it's not gonna jam for value on, on the river. And then we actually do start blocking some bluffs, which is, which is not good. So let's take a look then, see if our combo, ace queen off with no club, is a call on this river. And if we hover over ace queen off here, you can see that ace queen with a club, with the queen of clubs, is a call, but ace queen off without is a fold. So in this situation then, we just don't block quite enough value hands. We would really like to have the queen of clubs to block the flush. And on the flip side, we are actually blocking some of our opponent's bluffs. So not a good bluff catcher in this spot. So this is an example of a bad bluff catcher. I shouldn't have called here. It was really, really bad. I'll show you the result though. He ends up with pocket twos and we scoop the pot. And I think this just shows why it's important to study because we might look at this and think, yes, I'm a genius. I made a great call on the river, but actually I don't think our call was very good at all.
So in summary then, a good bluff catcher is where you block their value hands and you unblock their bluffs. That's what we're looking for, the good bluff catchers. Avoid the bad bluff catchers. We don't want to be blocking too many bluffs and we don't want to be in a situation where we don't actually block enough of their value hands either. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. I'm going to be back soon with a brand new video, but until then, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.